Okay, so today I'm going to be drawing a spaceman in a in a space suit, in an astronaut helmet. Um, so I'm also going to be telling a story at the same time. So this here is Monster Box. Monster Box, um, they're friends that I met uh, in Canada. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be the comic book convention person that you guys all know today. Um, so I'll be drawing this and also be telling the story of Monster Box, uh, the person behind Monster Box, and uh, what they did for me. So um, Monster Box, um, I, I actually know these guys through, they're like friends from Canada. Let me actually put this here so I can look at the reference. And the owner of Monster Box's wife uh, asked me to draw uh, him, her, a, a tattoo. So that's going to be uh, this image over here. But the tattoo is going to be uh, of uh, the character in wearing a, um, like in, in a space helmet. Okay. Hey, Adam. Adamantium Adam. Okay, so I'm going to be referencing this image. And feel free to ask questions, and I'm more than happy to answer uh, any questions. So I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit, make it a little bit neater. So I have a whole bunch of pencils that I'm going to start, start using. And again, I'm going to be drawing this uh, Frankenstein character. Uh, this is a logo that one of the um, my, my friends from uh, Canada, uh, who I met at uh, Calgary Expo. Uh, his name is Killam. Hey, Camila, how are you? His name is Killam, and um, he's the one who actually uh, taught me everything I know about uh, comic book conventions. So... Um, Callum, um, I met at Calgary Expo in, what year? I think it's like three or four years ago. Um, I remember went to the convention and I didn't really know um, what I was doing at the convention. Um, went to a convention, I didn't really have prints or, uh, or a banner or, or anything like that. Uh, I just went there uh, with some portfolio and people, you know, didn't really know who I was because I would just go to a convention and all I had was the, with some 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 of my original art in a folder and I, I i didn't really um know what i was doing at a convention so a few times the uh, people at a convention would say oh um do you know what a walden wong is and i said oh that's me and then a few times people ask me oh um how much does does this item cost and they're talking about uh products that w uh my neighbor was uh drawing you see, my friend's with one of your students. Uh, so I'm just here because of that. Your friend is one of my students. Oh, nice. Let me know who your friend is. Hi, Princess Chame Chameleon. So right now I'm drawing this and I'm going to start uh, sketching ahead. So this sketch is a request from Monster Box. Monster Box, uh, um, I guess we, we can call her Monster Box wife. Her name is uh, uh, Marlo. Uh, we are, we've also became good friends. So let me tell you a story about uh, Monster Box. So I went to the first convention and I met uh, Kellum. Kellum, who owns Monster Box, um, he met me and then we started uh, working together. And at the time when I was at, when I had a booth at Calgary Expo, all I had was, I didn't have a banner. I didn't have a banner. I didn't have any uh, prints or, or posters or anything like that. I, I, I actually, I didn't really know, know what I was doing at the time. I, mean, I think it was maybe four or five years ago. And Kellum told me, you know, you should start making some prints. So, you know, people who, li who, who like your work, they can, like, buy some of your work if they can't afford some of your original artwork. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I never actually made prints. I didn't know the process of making prints. So all of that was uh, fairly new to me. And Kellum, you know, he lives in Canada and I live in uh, San Francisco. And we would just talk on the phone or we would just message each other all the time and just talk. And then he goes, hey, why don't we just make some uh, prints together so he would uh, have some artist draw something or or um he would have me draw something and i would ink it or you know, and i would just do like uh whatever and then he would just print the he would make the prints in canada and then ship it over to me in san francisco i remember uh, some of those things that were shipped cost like it was like two hundred dollars just for shipping uh united states dollars let me see if there's any questions so yeah, feel free to ask any questions. I'll be uh, I'll be more than happy to answer them while I'm telling the story. Um, so this this video, I'm actually dedicating it to Marlo. Marlo is uh, Kellum's uh, wife. So Kellum and I, we became good friends. Uh, we talked about um, 
um, making comics together and also doing prints. And he was he was he was always there to help me along the way uh, in uh, making prints. A lot of times I, I I didn't know what I was doing. He knew everything about that. So we talked a lot. We got to know each other for a very uh, good time. Like he's one of my best friends. So let me see, draw some of this. So I'm drawing Frankenstein. I'm referencing things. This is this is one of his logos. That's why I'm using this. So this is very important to me. Okay, let me see if there's any questions. Let's see. Yeah, so in meeting Killam, um, I've only met him in person two times, two times only. One time in Calgary Expo, and then a few months later at Edmonton. Okay, uh, I, even, I even got to stay at his house where he was kind enough to invite me to his house and sleep over for, for a day. I think it's a day or two. I can't remember how many days. Uh, we got to know each other. We got to know each other really well, uh, really, really well. And a and, um, few years later, uh, we talked and then he got sick. So he, he got sick and then, um, you know, he was still, still really strong, got sick. And I think it was, he had a liver problem, so it wasn't really functioning. And then he had to be on dialysis for for a while. But you know, every time I talk, every time I called him, he always had the energy to talk to me. And I remember one time I had to make a, like a print, and then or also like canvas. I made like a Venom canvas uh, where it was shipped from from China all the way to Canada, and then Canada shipped to here. So um, when he did that. He he was sick, and then he didn't really tell me. He was like really, really sick. Like he wasn't really healthy. I remember he would um he would always talk to me, and then talk to me as if he's like uh, he's not sick, and then you know everything was okay. And then but but he he was a really strong person. He would, he would always be helping me out. So very very cool guy. Okay, I'm drawing the boats over here. So this is this is gonna be there's gonna be a helmet. Uh, I'm gonna be drawing a helmet. Let me see if I can draw. Probably not a round helmet. Let me see how round I can draw this helmet. So imagine Frankenstein in space, and this would be a space helmet right over here. I'm gonna move this back a little bit so this would be a space helmet. Hey, Wayne Mighty R, how's it going? Hey, Neil Valentine, how are you doing? Thanks for joining me on this live uh, feed. So uh, j just to repeat myself, I'm gonna I'm drawing this this image for Kellum's wife. Kellum's wife is uh, um, Marlo. Marlo. Uh, Marlo, um, that's her name. Uh, we became good friends. Uh, actually, we were friends for a, a good uh, amount of time, but we didn't really talk to each other on the phone that much. Uh, actually, not on the phone, but on Messenger. Um, and then one day, one day, um, Marlo called me and said, well, then, um, actually, Marlo messaged me and said, um, I think Marlo messaged me and there was a voicemail or a text that says, well, then can you call me back? And I've never actually gotten a call or a message from Marlo at the time. So I called back and I, I knew there was something, something wrong. And, you know, I, I just kind of knew because like, why would Marlo call me? Uh, he called me and then Marlo, Marlo was crying on the phone and said, well, then um, Kellum's no longer with us anymore. Um, he passed away. So he passed away. So I, I, didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. You know, like I, I'm all the way here in San Francisco, and and Cullum was in Canada, and Marlo, she's in Canada too, in uh, Windsor. I think I think they were in Windsor. So they passed away, and I, I just like my thought process of everyone that I've met at the time was just it was just devastating because to me. Now, I got to know uh, Kellum like a very long time. Actually, no, I wouldn't say a long time. Maybe, maybe I just, because I spoke to him so often that I, it feels like I've known him for a long time. I know everything about him. We joke around together. We would talk and we would make fun of each other. Kellum always would uh, join some of my live feeds, like like the one that you're watching now. And he would make comments. One of the things that he couldn't draw was a circle. That's why this circle on the helmet is so important to me because he was never able to draw a circle and I would make fun of him all the time. I would make fun of him that he couldn't draw a circle. He couldn't even draw a straight line. Kellum is a funny character. I, I mean, he also um, is very particular with his uh, eating habits. He doesn't like eating, uh, he, like, he likes eating hamburgers without 
any veggies on it, no tomatoes. And I remember uh, when I went to uh, Edmonton, Canada, I was thinking, man, Canada's kind of nice. There's going to be a lot of uh, good food there. I'm just going to see what kind of nice food that we can uh, eat there. And Kellum took me out like almost every night uh, when, when we were at the convention. Like, you know, like some, some people would just take friends out. And then every time we went out, we would just have burgers. The first place we went to was uh, McDonald's and we had poteen. Poteen is like this French fries uh, that has some gravy in it. And then another time we went to another place and we had a burger again, a hamburger place. And, and then another time we had lunch and we also had burgers. And I was thinking, man, Canada is such a boring place. All they have is burgers. They don't have anything else. Uh, it, it's <coughs> like it, this, this isn't, isn't fun at all. Uh, let's see. One might are sorry for your loss. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm friends with Snart. Oh, yeah. Say hi to Snart. Tell Snart to uh, come here and join the feed. Snart is a really amazing artist. She's one of my students that uh, does a really good job, draws really fast, draws everything in five minutes. Uh, Lemon. Uh, tell Snart to stop drawing happy faces with eyes, with, you know, with legs. Lemons with legs and arms and so cute. Yes, that's, that's what she likes drawing. Walden, you're going to be a Fan Expo San Francisco? I would like to go to Fan Expo in San Francisco. I actually contacted uh, Fan Expo to see if they would like for me to go. Uh, I sent them an email, but they haven't responded back. I think that they're just so busy that they haven't responded back. Okay, I'm going to draw some teeth here. Yeah, so Kellum, uh, we got to know him and I was like, man, Canada is such a boring place. Why would anyone want to live in Canada? Canada all they have is just hamburger. Hamburgers, like, what's so good about hamburgers? It's kind of boring. Okay, so right now I'm sketching this, lo uh, this logo, and I'm just going to give it a, a few, uh, like, spin of my style on it. I'm going to erase some lines here. Okay, well, that was that was actually pretty pretty easy and fast to uh, draw. Okay, no, so now that's a sketch. And then Camila, hey, Snart is actually here. Hey, Snart, how's it going? Uh, thanks. Thank you for joining my channel. So for those of you who are joining my channel right now, and or those of you who are watching later, uh, Snart is one of my students. Um, she's in the in in she's in the uh, in the feed right now. She's in there. So if you ever get a chance to follow her, you should follow her. I've been telling her that you should start um, painting and uh, drawing and doing some uh, live video feeds on uh, YouTube because she's probably the only person I know that does amazing artwork with her fingers and then I'm not saying that she's, she doesn't just draw with her fingers she's she's using her um, iPad Pro and instead of using a drawing tablet she's actually using her fingers and she's doing all these fast movement stuff I mean I, I've asked her to uh, film herself um, kind of make a video of her drawing but she's kind of shy she's still so young but for those of you who get a chance I, I would highly recommend uh, following Snart's channel, tell if, if you if she does a live feed, tell her I said hello. She also has a uh, um, Instagram uh, channel, uh, Instagram account. So also check check her out there. Snart, yeah, I think her screen name is at Snart. Uh, I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna write it over here. It's a uh, at S N A R T. Very talented. Uh, check out her uh, Instagram and check out her. Um, YouTube channel. Uh, she doesn't really have much content. I'm I'm trying to push her to to have more work. So right now I sketched everything and then my next step I'm gonna tighten it up. I'm gonna go tighten up. The next step is drawing it. So I'm gonna draw a little bit darker. I'm going to draw this and well as well as ink it. And we're also gonna be inking this as well. So I'm gonna have all this done today. Have this finished and here's the here's the ears. Okay, so the eyes, we're going to have the eyes a little bit darker. So after sketching everything, it is easier for me to draw um, what I need to draw. Okay, we're going to have the nose. We're going to adjust the nose. Okay, here we go. And then a little bit here, here, and then just tighten up the mouth a little bit. Okay, maybe adjust the mouth here. Okay, so I don't really need this anymore. Uh, just get this out of the way so there's more room for me to draw. Okay, let me see if there's any to draw Walden teaching. Uh, not right. I drew number 22835 on the paper next to me. Walden, what was the last San Diego Comic Con that you went to? Uh, hey, Danny, how's it going? It's good to see you here. 
But the last San Diego Comic Con, I actually don't remember. Um, I would say <laughs> many years. Actually, I, I do remember when Comic Con started doing the digital registration. Be before it used to be uh, all paper. When they started doing the digital registration, where everything uh, was automated, um, I, I, I that was the last time I uh, went to San Diego Comic Con. Not not so much that I want to go because um, I don't really collect much stuff anymore, and like. like I, I'm already working in comics, so it's just maybe one of these, th these days I'll go again. Uh, but uh, if I ever do go, it would be more so like as a as a fan collecting stuff, buying stuff, or meeting other artists and then just talking to them uh, like that. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me see how this boat looks like. Oh yeah, there's some uh, there's some electric electric stuff going on over here. There we go. So that's that's uh, Frankie. Frankie in a spacesuit. I forgot to post daily on Instagram. Post daily on Instagram. Post twice a day for those of you who have Instagram. Draw you some Canadian hamburgers. Yeah, I should draw. I'm gonna draw a Canadian hamburger right over here. Here's a piece of cheese and here's the hamburger. Okay, so now I have this. Um, here's the bottom uh, of the helmet. I'm gonna add some decorations to the helmet. Let me see what should I put on the helmet. Or maybe we'll just leave it plain because um, Kellum's wife, uh, Marlo, she's actually going to take this image and then she's going to be making a tattoo. She's going to be making a tattoo. Um, so I don't want to put too much stuff on this drawing. Um, otherwise, um, she's going to be, be in a lot of pain when she gets the, uh, the tattoo. Yeah. So Marlo, Marlo and I, after Kellum passed, uh, Marlo and I, we became good friends. We talked about Kellum. In a way, Marlo kind of re replaced Kellum for me. Like uh, when I was talking to Kellum, uh, it was more, we were just talking, about, we, it was more like a virtual friend. Like uh, we met each other twice, but we were always like talking. And then when Mar Marlo wasn't, when, uh, when Kellum wasn't around anymore, uh, Marlo came back and started talking to me more. Um, you know, we would just talk about stuff. And sometimes she would say stuff that would remind me of Kellum. And then um, maybe I would say something that would remind her of Kellum. Yeah, um, she's going to be visiting San Francisco um, sometime next year, I think. And I can't wait to see her, see her again. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see if there's any questions. I wish I could post it. I went to art camp and do post these drawings. Okay, let me make sure I want to make sure I don't miss any questions. Okay, let's see. Good, good. Okay, so now now I have everything drawn. I'm going to go and start uh, inking it. So the hardest part for me, I mean, drawing this was pretty easy. The hardest part for me is probably going to be inking this oval. I, I want to make this oval as perfect as I can. So I'm just going to do all the hardest parts first. I'm going to use the Reputograph Colinor pin. This is the pin I use. Uh, this one's the size 0 0.06. So Repeatograph color pin, there's different sizes, they're kind of like microns, but these are refillable. These are technical pins. So there's different colors, different colors for uh, different um, different um, tip sizes. Okay, you probably seen some artists who who do this, like their their Wolverine, they're, they're holding the, uh, their pins like this. Uh, yeah, I've done it too, I'm guilty of that. So I'm gonna start using something called a flex curve. This here is a flex curve right over here. Yeah, this is refillable. So I'm gonna show you guys. So the tip looks like this, okay? And if you wanna refill the ink, all you gotta do is just open it and then remove this cap and then pour ink into it. And then you can start inking with it. And then this, this one, like there's, uh, there's these separate pieces, this red piece you can uh, unwind. You can put this back together and then just shake it a few times and then you can start inking with it. And then the tool I'm gonna to use, uh, this one here is called I'm craving some Pier 39 clam chowder. Probably is that I'm in South, Southern California. I just had some clam chowder from uh, Boldy's Bakery just two nights ago. Uh, Daniel. Yeah, you, they, if you ever go to San Francisco, don't go to Pier 39 uh, Boldy's clam chowder. Get it at Stone Sound. You don't have to wait that long of a line and it's, it's much, much fresher. Okay, so this flex curve I'm using, Sometimes you just have to hold it with your hand and you hold it with uh, the bottom part here because it's such a long piece. This is like using a ruler, but you're, you're bending it into the right shape. Actually, let, let, me, let me draw this a little bit more tightly to make sure. I know my drawing is a little, little bit loose now. I'm just gonna draw this a little bit tight just to make sure I know where everything is. Otherwise, it's uh, like a little bit of a guessing. Okay, I'm gonna draw this line right there. 
Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna draw maybe two little buttons here, just just because, just just so it looks like. There we go. There, there. We maybe draw a button over here. Yeah, there. That that looks better to me. So it's not so it's not so plain. Okay. So I'm gonna start drawing using this flex curve. I'm gonna turn this upside down. I'm gonna hold this with my hand. Probably can't see it. I'm gonna move this back. I'm gonna hold it with my hand, and we hold the other part with my elbow to hold it in place. If I don't, this thing's gonna be wobbling around. You see how that this is just flexing around? So I do need to use my elbow to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna ink this one line all the way across. Before I ink, I have a scratch paper on, on the right side and I would just make sure the ink flows. And then now I'm just gonna start inking this, this part here. Make sure it's taut and it's not gonna move when I ink this line. So I'm just place this here and then ink this line with one go. I try not to lift it up to let go and then uh, to start it back up again. I want to go one go so I don't get any shaky line. So right here, I'm going to put this right over here, right there. Okay, now now I have that in the right place. I'm going to ink that one line with one go. Don't stop, just go all the way across. The only time you need, do, need, do need to stop is when the uh, pen is out of ink. There, I'm going to move that one, another small section right over here. And then I'm going to ink another line. This time, I'm going to go over twice because I want the holding line, which is the outside line, to be a little bit thicker. So I'm shifting it a little bit. And then now I'm going to go back over to, over again. And then I'm going to pay attention to the tip of my pen that it doesn't wobble. Okay? Because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just thickening up that line. I could have used a thicker technical pin but I'm too lazy to grab it so I'm just using this and I'm just going over a few times there we go that is the bottom of the helmet now I'm gonna do the other part Let's see flex curve tutorial yep this is called the flex curve uh, so it's flex. one side you have I guess this is millimeters uh, yep centimeters millimeters and then on the back it's uh, inches where it's just like a little wire that goes through this plastic thing you can bend it to whatever shape it works as it works just like a flex curve okay and now I'm gonna try to ink this oval for the helmet hopefully now I know this flex curve isn't gonna be enough it is, isn't gonna be so no what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink partial and then come back in and ink the other partial so so the top here Gonna make sure it's nice and oval. Okay, nothing worse than a a space helmet that looks kind of like wonky and stuff. Okay, go over here, hold this, make sure it's in the right place. Okay, Can go here. Okay, this this looks okay. Just to double check. Okay, that looks okay. And then now one go. I'm holding it at an angle so the ink doesn't skip. And then I'll stop. That is the top of the space helmet. And then the rest, I'm going to try to follow up and clean it up a little bit. I just, I just need to straighten out the French curve. Well, not French curve, but the flex curve. And then, let's see, bro, is it, can you send it in a disk and C-A-Y-K? The Adam Instant Discord. What disk? Send what disk? Can you send it? In disk and I want to see you UK. Okay, well, I guess you guys are talking to each other. That's good. Okay, so right here, I'm going to find this place. Find that I I I I do a test run to make sure I can reach that line. If not, it's going to be off centered. So I go slowly and I'm tilting it until it hits there, right over there. So now that matches, and then now the other side. I'm going to make sure this arch arches in the right place. Okay, I'm going to start, start flowing inking. Okay, I missed it. And then I'm going to ink all this all the way down. This is the glass portion of the helmet. Okay. There's a the helmet. Now I'm going to ink the sides of the helmet. And I'm going to use what's called a flex curve. This is the flex curve. Uh, actually, no, this is the template. This is not a flex curve. I'm going to use a template. I'm going to find the right shape. And then I'm going to ink that curve. So right here, I'm going to use this one. Now I'm going to ink this side right here. I'm going to make it thicker by slightly shifting it with my hand. Okay, I'm going to go back to the other side. Remember I used the, was that the fourth one? Yes, that's the fourth one. I'm going to turn this around and go over here and use the fourth one. I'm going to make sure it's the right length. 
Okay, I don't want to make it uh, wonky. So it was from here to here. Okay, so I'm going to move this over. So it's going to be from there to there. Okay, the markings that I marked on the template right over there. This is a plastic template and I, I mark it a lot all the time. All you have to do is just, just wipe it down, wipe it down later, get it, get it there. Okay, so now I have that, I'm gonna draw the backside. Now, because it's glass, I skip a space. So it doesn't, so it gives, gives the illusion of glass. So right here, I'm gonna add a dot and then draw this. And then on the other side, same thing here. I'm gonna make sure this is the right length. Go over here, I'm gonna add a dot and then draw that line. Okay, so now we have the helmet done. Uh, that's the hardest part uh, for me. Um, it, actually, I'm going to use templates to do these bolts over here. So uh, since I have the template, since I have the template out, I'm going to go over here. Uh, let's see. Let me see what angle. Um, I don't know if I would like the angle of that one. Let me I'm gonna make this come out this way and then tilt this out this way. Okay, so it looks like it's the bolts are. Okay, there we go. Okay, then I'm gonna take the template. The flex curves definitely takes some getting used to. For me, it's too, too uh, bulky. It is, I actually have two flex curves. Um, I have a longer one, which, which I just showed you, this longer one, this is the longer flex curve. And then I also have a smaller flex curve. The smaller flex curve is, oh, what happened to my smaller flex curve? But I do have a smaller flex curve, oh, here it is. I have the smaller flex curve. Like this one, I'll I'll save this bigger one to do bigger arcs. This small one, you see how it's all bent up. I actually use this to do to bend like like small little shapes. Um, if you don't want to use flex curve, you can always use like a uh, well, instead of flex curve, you can always use a um, uh, French curve. Okay, so a French curve is this thing over here. This is the French curve. You should be able to find the right curve. You know, like like this. Just find the right line. Just ink it, and then once you're done with that, you just move it around, and then find the right angle, and then and then and then ink it, and so forth. But I find sometimes using the uh, the flex curve is a little bit easier. Okay, so the bolts over here, we're gonna go. I'm gonna find the right angle. So whatever angle I use, I'm gonna continue with that same same art. I'm gonna move in closer so you guys can see better. So right over here, I'm gonna add this curve here. That's one curve. There's a second one, follow through, and then the outer one, make it a little bit thicker. So what I'm gonna do is with my left hand, I shift it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna ink that same line. That gives it a little bit of a thicker line. So that one was this one right here. So I'm gonna turn around, and then do the same thing, this line, ink once, this line here, ink twice, this line, ink two times. So I'll ink one line, I'll shift it with my left hand, shift it up, and I'll ink another line. That way you get a thicker outside line. Okay, then I'll take a ruler. This is my ruler. This ruler, these pennies, can anyone guess what these pennies are for? Hello, Mr. Wong. Uh, first time watching you live. Hey, let's create. How's it going? Good to see you here. Nice drawing, by the way. Thank you. The French curve rulers are good, too. The French curve, definitely. Okay, so this ruler here, this uh, this this 45 degree ruler, 90, 90 degree. I put pencils, I put pennies in here. Now, the pennies isn't to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There's six pennies here. It's not to make the ruler more valuable and like six, six cents more valuable. What it, what it does is it raises up the ruler. So if I hold it this way, you see how the pencils, you see how the pennies are raising up the uh, the ruler? So you don't make ink go anywhere. Yes. Because sometimes, I'm going to demonstrate for you how if you don't have, a, I'm going to use the back side. If I was inking this part, oops, if I was inking this part and I inked the line over here, watch what happens when I move the ruler. You see some of that smudge? See some of that smudge that, that could happen. Like for example, I, I, if I would ink here and all of a sudden I move the ruler by accident, you're gonna smudge that line. However, if I have a ruler like this, any kind of ruler, and you put pennies, it it levels it. So even if you even if you moved it, like for example, like this, nothing is touched because it's in between the rulers. Now you can always why not buy a uh, bevel ruler? Like a ruler that has a beveled edge, uh, like this. Okay, see this this ruler does have a beveled edge. You see that, but however, if I had an acry uh, a, a, a acrylic ruler, 
I can actually see through what I'm drawing. So sometimes if I need to draw something, for example, if I need to draw that line, I'm using this ruler, you can't really see where what you're drawing because everything's covered up. But if you have an acrylic ruler with pencils on top, you just put this on top, you can see like what you're what you're inking. See, let me see some of the questions. I hope Walden Sunday holds the first ever Walden Con. <laughs> we can all hang out over a weekend and work together to make a small comic. That would be fun. I wouldn't mind doing that. I don't know if anyone would want to do a Walden Con, but you know, that would be fun. I actually have the location uh, to do something like that. So that's how you make a perfect ellipse. Thanks for the tip. Sure. So now I'm going to take the ruler. I'm going to find those bolts to make it leveled right over here. And it's kind of crooked, but it's okay. Uh, I'm just going to level out a little bit. And then I'm going to ink the outside line. I'll go over twice. Same thing on this side. I'll go over twice. And then on the bottom, bottom of the boat, I'm just going to ink this line here. Go over twice. Now, I'm going to share another tip with you guys. For those of you who are here, you, you're going to love this. So sometimes when I'm using a... A um like a curve like this. If I'm if I want a line to be thicker, I'll ink watch, watch how I move my hands. I'm gonna be doing this. I'll ink one line like this. After I ink that line, I'll tilt it this way and I'll ink another line. What I'm doing is I'm pivot pivoting the ruler to get that line a little bit thicker. So watch, this area is still wet. I'm gonna move my ruler there and notice how it's not smudging anything. Okay, so I'm gonna ink this line right here, one line. I'm gonna build uh, I'm gonna tilt my hand to make that line thicker. Like this, tilt the hand, make it thicker. Now, I'm going to show you a difference of when I don't do that. One line like this, one line like this. Now, this one, I'm going to pivot. I'll pivot. You see how that line is thicker than that line? Okay. This way, you don't always have to shift your hand uh, that often. And then now, I'm going to go and ink in the other side. Smash the like button. Yes, of those of you who are watching this video now, uh, smash the like button so there's more people who will see my feed. Uh, thank you for smashing. And then for those of you who haven't, actually most of you who are watching this, um, it's because you're probably subscribed to my channel already. Uh, but hit that like button. And also, uh, if you haven't subscribed or if you're new watching this, because after this live feed, I'm going to um, save the uh, video as, as a regular video. And for, if you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel, let's subscribe to my channel. All right. So here, all the hardest part is done. Anything that requires me to use two hands, uh, where I'm holding a ruler or template, um, that takes me a bit of time. Okay, the next thing I'm going to use is, this is called the Aguash Pentel. It's Pentel Aguash Brush Pen. I'm watching because Camellia said you were live. Yeah, thank you, Snart. Yeah, yeah Camellia, thank you for both of you watching. So this pin here, I'm... I would say I'm the comic book artist that revolutionized the comic book industry. Like everyone was using these uh, Windsor Newton brushes or all these special brushes, Tomahawk. I went into a Japanese art, art store in Japantown, um, a, a, a Japanese stationery store, and I saw these pins. They're actually meant for watercolors. People would fill this with water. They would fill the barrel with water, and then they would squeeze the barrel like this, they would squeeze the barrel and then water would come right out. And they would actually use uh, watercolor pencils, they would draw watercolor pencils and then they would use this and then they would just, you know, like, uh, make it look like watercolors. Uh, some artists would fill this with ink and use it for uh, like uh, characters, Japanese calligraphy or Chinese calligraphy or whatever. Uh, I decided to use this for inking, where I do not fill this, I do not fill the barrel and I would dip this uh, pin into the bottle of ink like so. Uh, no one was doing this for a long time and until I started making YouTube videos and people saw me uh, using this and they're wondering like, they're like, well, then what is that? So I started telling everyone, uh, some of my comic book friends who um, also work on comics, they also messaged me, well, then what is that you're using? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? I just started telling everyone. And then now a lot of artists are using the same, same brush. Uh, they may they may have learned it from uh, somebody else or whoever, but most of them it, it all came directly from uh, my some of my YouTube videos. So, yeah, so um, that's that's how that happened. So a lot of comic book artists are using this this brush to do the work. Okay, so I'm using this brush because I can when I feed the brush, just more control. I know exactly how much ink I'm dipping. Okay. 
And the good thing about these brushes compared to a Winsor Newton is um, once you once they last longer because they're um, they're made of nylon, and it was for those Winsor Newton that you buy say in US dollars they're twenty five dollars you spend twenty five dollars and then they'll last like a few months after that you throw it away. This guy is only like maybe six seven dollars, so you can buy like much more. And if it breaks, like just just buy another one. Okay, here's the eye. Okay. So here's this eye. There we go. And then I'm going to ink the mouth. Let me see if there's any questions. I'm keeping... Okay. It's amazing how long you keep those Pentel brushes alive. Yeah. Um, they last for a long time. Not only that, I don't need to clean it. I don't clean these brushes. I just dip it and use it. The only time I do need to give it a little bit of swoosh is when it's dried out. Uh, but for the most part, I don't really need to clean it. I can use that brush on comic boards. You can use it on anything. I'm actually using this on, it's not even a comic board right now. This is, what is this? This is a drawing, Strathmore, uh, drawing premium recycled paper. Um, you can actually ink, use this to ink on anything. Yeah, like here, here is, here's a regular, Printer paper, printer paper here. Okay, so then I'm just, right over here. I'm just, you know, it will still work. Look at these drawings. So I'm like a visual person. My my sister and uh, my sister, I have a friend who, I have actually my sister in law, She she's also a friend. Um, she was redesigning her kitchen and then she needed ideas and she couldn't really visualize, uh, you know, how her kitchen's gonna look. So I asked her, uh, how about putting the refrigerator here, putting the stove here, or put this refrigerator and then an island over here? So I would just draw, like sketch all this up, like in a few minutes, I would just show her. So these are just drawings, really, really easy and really quick. This is just knowing a one point perspective and then you just draw everything in that same vanishing point. But that, 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 that'll be a, another video. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to ink uh, the mouth. Okay. Ink the mouth. Now when, when I'm inking, um, what I really like to do is, is to make sure that every line I ink, inking, it's like sharp. Okay, when I say sharp, that means when you're landing the brush, you want a sharp tip. Okay, I'm going to just go in closer so you guys see. So right here, never ink anything like that. You don't want you don't want that. You don't want that. You want your lines to be sharp. So it's really it's really about going in there, landing it softly, and then lifting it up softly. The faster you go, the smoother that line is, like that. Okay, the slower you go, the more shaky that line is. So the faster you can ink these lines the smoother and sharper the edges are. See that? Okay, very easy. It just takes practice. Uh, once you get used to it, it does get easier. Okay, now I'm gonna start inking the mouth. And then I'm gonna start thinking about line weights here. So I'll go thick over here, thin and then thick. And I'm gonna go here, thin, thick, thicker here. And some of the teeth. There we go. Here's some of the teeth. And then I don't ink every teeth. I'll just indicate where the teeth is. And then I'm just drawing some of the teeth. There we go. Yeah, so one of the conventions that I've been to, like, again, um, Calgary Expo, one of the first conventions where I met, where I met um, Killam and Marlo, they, they actually sent me a souvenir. And this is the souvenir. I still keep it uh, with me. This is a, uh, I guess this is a light up glass ornament. Uh, yeah, so I actually put this in my, in my, uh, in my, in front of my television to remind myself like uh, they're really good friends uh, from Edmonton. Actually, it was just, it wasn't from the same convention. They went to another convention and then uh, they bought this and then sent this to me. So I still have this. They also sent me another gift um, and I, I keep it because you know, they're probably my only friends in, well, I have other friends too, but they, M Marlo actually worked in um, Starbucks and then she got me this Starbucks uh, ornament that says Canada on it. And I'll keep, I keep these together and then every time I watch a team, it reminds me of them. Yeah, so there's a lot of people that you'll meet along the way. 
when you're doing uh, a career in like whatever, anything that you're doing, um, I'm very grateful for all the people that I meet along the way. Uh, if it wasn't for Kellum, uh, the person who uh, uh, was uh, part of uh, Monster Box, if it wasn't for him, I, I don't know anything about prints and posters. Even the banner that I currently have, that I currently that I currently use, you may you may you may have seen me use, you may have seen that banner in some of my videos. It's because of Kellum. Kellum's the one actually made me that Venom banner, and then he he gave me the banner. So I, I still have that banner today, and every convention I go to, I'll bring it along with me. Okay, and that banner, banner I, I was actually over at Kellum's place in Canada uh, when he was uh, building that banner. He was putting it together, and he goes, here, Walden, just take it with you. And I'm like, take it with me? He goes, yeah, this is yours. So that, that was very nice of him. But actually, I've never seen someone make a banner. He, he actually made it, so that was very cool. Let me see if there's any questions. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, you gonna you gonna have me practicing with the brush tomorrow? Thanks for sure. Still learning to use it. Uh, I will try using this brush next time. How long do you use the brush before throwing it away? This brush is expensive at Michaels. This brush is maybe seven dollars. I've been using this for like like a year, two years. I, I don't throw it away, and even when it gets dull. I'll still keep it. Here's another one that's even older. And this one is much more dull. Sometimes I'll use this just, just to fill in blacks. So it does last a very long time. Um, again, don't need to clean it. It's just like some of those other brushes that has pre-filled ink. It's not like you're gonna clean those brushes um, because it has ink in it. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna ink this here. So when I use this kind of brush, I like going from thin to thick. So I'm gonna go from here, I'm gonna start thin. And then I'll go thick, okay? Go thin, and then go thick. I'm gonna go here, like that. I'm gonna ink in some of the hair. Okay, and then we're gonna ink in some hair here. I'm just gonna follow the outline of the hair. And so here, the widow's peak. The widow's peak is right here. Uh, right over here, there we go. Okay, and then see, Snart says, I don't have any microns yet. Is there a certain place to get them? Uh, yes, Snart. Um, actually, um, I'll, send, um, I'll send you links on where to get microns and then uh, where to get like, the good microns. There's, there's a lot of microns out there. Uh, you can get in stores, but the cheapest place uh, I know is on Amazon. But don't, don't just buy any of them. Uh, there's certain ones that is cheaper. Um, because uh, some ones has a certain set. You should get microns, but in the future, Snart, I do want you to learn how to use these crow quills. I know they're hard to use. It's a little piece of dust. These crow quills, this is far superior than microns, okay? But um, in the meantime, uh, you can practice using uh, uh, microns first, and I'll teach you how to refill them, okay? I'm just gonna hold the bottle of ink while, I, while I'm inking. Okay, so here, I'm gonna fill this in. Okay, fill this. Okay, add some lines over here. Okay, same for the other side. I'm just gonna add some lines over here. Okay, and here, make this go down. And I'm not gonna fill in all the black areas now because if I do that, it's just gonna take a little bit longer for it to dry. And I am inking on an incline table, so I need to kind of hold up the artwork. Make sure it doesn't, because if I let go, it's, the artwork's just gonna fall. Have you ever spilled ink jar on your drawing? I've never actually spilled ink on a drawing. I, I keep it flat on the table, um, so I, I don't spill ink. Um, sometimes I'll spatter ink by accident, but I've, I've never spilled ink uh, on the drawing before, okay? So I, 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 won't, I won't hold it, okay? I'll keep it leveled on the, on the table so, so it stays flat. Uh, if I'm holding it, there's a chance that I'm shaking and then just uh, the, the ink might sp uh, splash a little bit, which I don't want to do. Okay, so we're thinking you got to be mindful. Like some of these areas are, that are still wet. So I'm just going to levitate my hand and ink that line like that. Okay, make sure you don't ink over the area that is still wet because there's a good chance that you can smudge it. So areas that has like a little bit of blob, I'll show you guys. Like in, if I 
angle it, you see a sheen there. You see that? That's really wet. So because it's wet, I'm just going to go in there and kind of swipe a little bit to help it dry a little bit quicker. So I'm going to ink in the ears. And make sure everywhere is dry. A good indicator of making sure uh, places are dried is 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 to look for the sheen. And if there's no sheen, then it then it's good. Then it's good that uh, it's not uh, um, that it's not wet. Okay. You hear me talking. All of a sudden, you hear me kind of like pausing. I'm I'm still one of those artists that holds my breath when I'm inking. Uh, because every, it's, it's not a ha it's, it's kind of a habit that I develop. I don't really don't need to hold my breath because when I first started inking, I thought that if I hold my breath, it'll keep my hand more steady. Uh, but after uh, doing this for some time, you know, uh, I don't really need to hold my breath, but then it's just a habit. Okay, I'm going to ink in the... Okay, you see how I skipped that line? Okay, that line right there. There's there's a few ways I can fix this. Uh, I can cover my my mistake uh, on the bolt. You see that little line there? I'm just gonna cover my mistake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna taper some lines right here to make it look like that. I did that on purpose. Okay, do the same with the other side, right over here, and then here, do it on the bottom, and then on this side. I'm not gonna taper them. I'm just gonna hash them in. So now, that mistake that was there, no one's going to notice. No one's going to notice. It looks like it's uh, there on purpose. Okay, I'm going to ink in this ear. And then the other ear. Okay, let me see if there's any questions. Good night, Walden. Hey, Danny, thanks for joining me. Uh, thank you for the lesson. I have to get up at 5 a.m. You're welcome, Danny. Uh, it's good to see you here on the live feed. I like this brush. It's very easy to use and easy on the hands, especially for watercoloring. It can be used for, for line weights. Yes, you can use that for line weights and, and watercolors. It is a nice brush. You can use it for a lot of other things. I actually use this for watercolor pencils. I use it for um, watercolors. Uh, they come in three different sizes. Uh, they're small, medium, large. The one I'm using is medium. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, the one I'm using is large. Okay, there's that. And then now I'm going to draw the chin, making sure everywhere is dried. Okay, I'll roll my arm on it, making sure that, um, you know, it's, it's dried. Okay, here is the chin. I want to make the chin a little bit thicker to create the illusion that there's a shadow down there. And I don't want to over-render this because, again, this is going to be someone's tattoo. Okay, I'm going to dip my brush. Yeah, for those of you who are watching this channel, please hit the like button so more people can see it. Uh, thank you for doing that. Okay, now I'm going to add some texture over here. So his face, those fast lines that I was telling you guys about, the faster you dagger these lines, uh, the sharper it will look. Okay, so here's some ways. And then here's some wrinkles. Okay, we're going to add some shadows here. And then here is this. Make sure I don't, this, I'm gonna turn it around. So I, I'll use my left hand and I'm constantly spinning the brush, spinning the Bristol board. Okay, just press down, press down here. Now I'm gonna create some kind of a shadow uh, on, 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 his, uh, on his face, just, just so there's some kind of um, shadow effect over here. Um, I'm gonna dip the brush. I'm gonna make the top of the eyes dark first. So the top of the eye, we're going to make this, like this, and then fill this in. And then this part, uh, add some frown lines. Going to make it a little bit thicker. I don't want the lines to be too thin. Otherwise, uh, the tattoo artist isn't going to gonna see it. Again, this, uh, my friend Marlo, um, the wife of Kellum, uh, the widower of Kellum, he's, he's, she's going to be making this into a tattoo on her arm so I'm gonna put as minimum lines as I can so so she doesn't I don't want her to get the tattoo and then start yelling at Walden ouch that hurts Walden why are you drawing so many lines uh, and then after this artwork is done I'm also gonna give it to uh, Marlo so she can keep it so she can uh, hang it up on a wall in her house or something so here's the black over here Okay. I'm going to give uh, his face a little bit of shadow over here. So right 
a little bit uh, right over here. Okay, some shadows over here. So the light source is coming from the left side. Okay, I'm gonna go here, a little bit thicker. There we go. There, there's the shadow. Um, I, I almost tried to brush it. I'm gonna clean it off a little bit. And here's some shadows here. Let me see if there's any questions. You gotta color this too. I'm not gonna color this. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this in black and white. Hey, Romu Tiklin, how are you? It's good to see you here. Let's see. I prefer, I prefer microns because I like going over the lines over and over again, like some line weight. Yeah. So microns. You have to ink a line once and then you have to go over over and over again, which takes time. If you're a professional artist, you want to finish doing that with one stroke and be done with. If you could do that with one stroke, you can move on to another project and then not, sp not spend a lot of time, you know, building up the lines. But I do use a smaller brush tip uh, that I sometimes will draw to a line and fill it in because, uh, you know, I don't want to switch, switch and draw like uh, use two brushes. I use a fatter brush, a thicker brush. Let's see. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Good to see you here. Let's see. I also like these calligraphy pins that have that you have. I think they are much better and cheaper than using micron pins, especially buying a whole bottle in India. Yes, those will last longer. Uh, with those crow, crow quills, uh, what uh, Les Quinn is talking about, um, these crow quills, you can use it over and over again. But if you press down too hard, there's a good chance that it could break. So you have to be very delicate uh, with these crow quills. Let me see if there's any other questions that prefer my Hey, Walden. Uh, glad I caught this. Good to see you here. Hey, Joe. How's it going? Hi, Walden. Hope you are good. Frankie looks good. Thank you. You're going to color I'm not going to color this. This, this one's going to be in black and white because uh, my friend, she's going to be getting a... I think she's going to be getting a black and white uh, tattoo. Uh, if she wanted me to color this, maybe I'll make another video on coloring it. But I'm just going to keep this in black and white for now. Uh, let's see... How's everyone tonight? Good. Are you color this? I think I'm going to switch to calligraphy pins instead of micron. I noticed the tip of the micron pin messes up after inking too many times. Now, okay, that's a, that's now your your micron tip does break if you ink too hard. If you're pressing down too hard, the felt of the tip of the micron. What I'm talking about is uh these guys, like the tip is a very small is a very small tip right here. See that? If you press down too hard, that tip is going to be crushed and it won't work anymore. Now, when you're inking, try not to press down too hard. Uh, if you're pressing down too hard, there's a good chance that you're going to mess up the tip even before it runs out of ink. So try to keep everything uh, like like light-handed. Like a lot of people, when they first learn to draw, because they're drawing with pencil, they're drawing like really, really dark. So try, try to avoid drawing a dark. Don't press down too hard. Okay, I'm going to ink this shadow here. Okay, I'm going to add some more shadows here. Okay, I'm going to turn it upside down because this area is wet. I don't want to um, smudge any of the line work. And then for the helmet part, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow on this side. So there's depth in here. Make that line a little bit longer. And then on this side, I'm also going to make this one uh, a little bit of shadow on this side. Yeah, with using a brush, it does take time. Once you get used to it, it does get easier uh, to use. I'm gonna make sure I ink this one. Give that dimple a little bit more of a thicker line here. Let me see if there's any other questions. Micron tips get smaller from pressing too hard. I ruined many. Yes, that's that's very, very true. Let's see, my friend let me try one of his clergy pens and I was using it backwards and also ripped the paper. I've actually... <laughs> Done the same thing. So what Snart was saying, what Snart is saying is, here's the calligraphy pen. The concave side is the side that you ink with. This side, the round side is the side that you ink with. I've seen artists that don't know how to use this. They're using it this way because because they think that this is like a spoon which you hold the ink and then they're inking it this way. It, 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 that breaks it. But the correct way to ink is this direction. Okay. Let me see if there's any. Walden has a great video on how to refill microns. Yes. Yeah. Of all the videos I have, um, um, the how to refill microns is like 
the most viewed uh, video that I have. Uh, that's probably one of the first videos that I made. And I didn't think that so many people would uh, watch it. Okay, but, but but the funny thing was when I made the video, I didn't know what I was doing when I was making video. I, I had a, a runny nose at the time. I think I had a cold and I keep sniffing my nose. And then even to this day, some people will comment, hey, Walden, blow your nose. Uh, uh, next time, like, blow your nose, get better or whatever. That's been haunting me for, for like ever. Even though I made that video many, many years ago. Okay, I'm going to turn this around this side and fill in the blacks. You see how this brush, I was able to draw thin lines and now I just use it sideways to fill in blacks like a, a little bit quicker. Like that. Okay, so this, this does this job uh, really well. Okay, hold it to the side and then just use the brush sideways. Right here, I'm gonna hold it here. Make sure I don't smudge any areas. Okay, I'm gonna go back, put the bottle of ink down. Let's see, Kai wrote, hey Kai, how's it going? Good to see you here. Kai wrote, the Comic-Con video where you talked about how to break into the industry was the first video I found you by. Also your inking portfolio video, video. first two videos I found. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the, the con video, some of those con videos is because sometimes when I go to a convention, I'm actually behind the booth and I don't really get to see the convention. So I'll, I'll try to walk around the convention and kind of meet some of the vendors and uh, artists that, that are there and kind of interview with them for a little bit. So later on, I can go home and watch it. And everyone else that watches my video can, can also watch it. Um, people seem to enjoy it. So every time I go to a convention now, I would actually uh, carry my... Um, my camera there, uh, it's an SLR camera, and then I have like this, this thing that I hold uh, to hold the camera, and then I just uh, walk around and then make the videos and just talk to people. It's, it's interesting. I, I, like I, I did it for a while, and sometimes I go to convention and then I hear people say, hey, that's, I hear it from when I'm walking around with uh, with the camera, people say, hey, that's Walden Wong. Like, I don't know, like it surprised, it still surprised me. I mean, I've been working in comics, but it still surprises me every day when people recognize me or like what I do. So some of them, they recognize, they don't know me for my work in comics, but they know me for the videos that I make. So that, that's, that, that was interesting to, to know, to know that. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of a wrinkle right over here. There we go. And then a little bit of a wrinkle here and then there. Okay, this looks, this looks pretty good so far. Okay, I'm going to start adding those bolts. Uh, let me see what I should do with the eyes. I think I need to add this eye a little bit more shadow right here. Yeah, I think that looks better. I'm going to go here and add a little bit more. Okay. Okay, and then now I'm going to ink these bolts on the bottom. Put this away. Uh, make sure everywhere is dry. Uh, the lines are kind of like, um, kind of scratchy here. I'm just going to go back and kind of, Go a little bit slower to make those lines a little bit more crisp. Okay. Normally, if I was doing this for a comic book, I would uh, taper a lot of lines. Like even over here, I kind of taper a little bit too much. Yeah. Uh, but you know, what I, sometimes I would tell. I'm just gonna thicken up some of these lines a little bit more. I'm gonna make this line a little bit thicker, just just because it'll look better once once the tattoo is made. Yeah. So I'm gonna beef up some of the lines. So and. Out, all the stuff that I teach you guys about line weights and everything out the door uh, when you're creating a tattoo for someone uh, just gonna beef up this line a little bit and then the bolts just gonna make it a little bit thicker okay and then thicker on the side so once I'm done with this artwork um, it's gonna, this art is gonna be I'm gonna scan it send it to um, Marlo, who lives in Canada, and then when the art is done, uh, I'm going to ship this artwork to Canada. So it's going to travel from San Francisco all the way to Canada. Now, I'm going to ink in some of those burst lines over here. Uh, before I ink in some of those lines, I'm just going to draw draw them in first, make sure everything is kind of nice. I know I sketched it uh, earlier. Okay, and then on this side, just draw it a little bit neater. Okay, there we go. So there's uh, some kind of electricity there. Let's see, 
Let me see. Let me answer some questions while I'm uh, here. Uh, ink it to see. Let's create. All, but I think watercolor brush is the perfect tool for inking. Yes, they come in three different sizes. Yeah. So a lot of brushes these days originally they were made for watercolors. It's, uh, it wasn't until a comic book work was done and people would start using brush that they use a watercolor brush to do inking. Uh, Snart wrote, when I color and draw with crayons, I break them in half because I'm pressing too hard. Yes, yes. Sometimes I'm using a regular pencil. I'm drawing too hard and then the lid will just break. Uh, it happened to me. I'm using a crayon. I'm using color pencils, using pencil, and I'm pressing too hard and it breaks. All of us, as when we were a kid, we learned how to use these big fat pencils in kindergarten class and we learned how to press down really hard. So that learn that method of learning, you have to unlearn and try to learn how to control your tools as an artist to be elegant the way you draw, like how hard to press and how light to press, because that's also important when you're doing artwork. I do the same at Comic-Con. I shoot video for documenting my fun experience. Yes, shooting video at, at Comic-Con is fun. And, and a lot of people like like watching those videos. Um, I sometimes, um, when I don't go to a convention, I want to know about it. I just like uh, go on YouTube and I'll search it up. I'm a skin artist. That's my day job. I'm Moonlight as a comic book artist. Uh, you, oh, cool. I didn't know. So you're a tattoo artist too. Oh, very cool. Very cool. So I, I'm doing uh, what you're doing. <laughs> I'm doing something for what, what you you're, you usually do, I guess. Okay, here's some of the burst lines. So here, I'm going to make these thin and thick as fast as I can and as smooth as I can. So this is just like tapering lines. And I want these to be sharp. Uh, I'm gonna have them. I'm not gonna have. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have them connect, just, just because. Okay. Yeah. Even though I penciled it in, I'm not inking the lines exactly how it is. Uh, my pencils is just a mere suggestion of where I'm gonna ink the lines. Okay. Maybe another one here. And then on this side, I'm gonna ink this one here. Okay. I'm gonna go here. Okay. And you notice that I, I actually move the drawing board to where my hand fits. I'm not actually moving my hand this way. I'm actually turning this. Uh, when you when you do that, your your lines are more, you have more control of the lines. There's some artists who can draw and ink everything with uh, without doing it. And, you know, good for them. Uh, they can do it. But for me, I'm, I'm more comfortable uh, turning uh, the Bristol board or the sketchbook uh, around. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add some more shadows on the bottom. I think it needs more shadows. So it looks like it's going inside the, um, the helmet. Okay, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna have this go all the way down. Okay. Let me see if there's any other questions. Let's see, Snart wrote, right now I'm drawing something to post on Instagram. Yeah, I, I, Snart, I've been looking at your Instagram. You're, you're falling behind. I want you to post more. I want you to post as many as much as you can. If you can, like for for example, once I'm done with this one, I'm gonna post it uh, for tomorrow's uh, Instagram post and and Facebook and social media. So sometimes it's just fun posting stuff up and then see what people say. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow right here. Okay, so we have that. Now I'm gonna ink the boats on the bottom. Uh, these little, these little squeaky lines that I drew. So I'm gonna use the number, number, number. What's this? Number two over sixty. The red, the red one over here. And I'm just gonna use a circle template. Uh, circle template is this one. This one right here. And this part is easy. I'm just gonna make sure it's gonna go into the right direction. Uh, so we have. I'm gonna pick a bigger oval. We have this. Make sure that it's, it's dry here. I'll ink this circle. Okay, I'll shift it down, I'll ink the bottom a little bit thicker, and I'll move it up. I'm pointing at the nose, so I know which direction to go. And then I'm going to ink this bolt like this. I'm doing some shifting as I'm doing this, okay? I'm going to go here, same bolt, when I, which one was that? That was the fourth one. So same bolt right here. I'll ink the circle. With my left hand, I'll shift it down slightly. I'm going to ink the bottom half. And then I'll move it higher. And then I'm going to do some shifting and then rotating for that bolt right there. Okay, same with this side. I'm gonna do the same. Uh, we're gonna move, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller because it's further away. I'm gonna point at the nose, like uh, this whole row point at the nose. I'm gonna ink that circle first, shift it down a little bit, and then move it higher, shift it to the left, and then shift it to the right. Okay, there's that bolt. 
And then we're gonna have this one here. Actually, that one's off, but you know, it's still it's still okay. And we're gonna move, whoops. We're gonna move this one here. This one should have been an oval. Okay, I'm just gonna make it smaller. Okay, we're gonna eat this one, shift it up, move it higher here. And then, yeah, this one would have been nicer if it's uh, oval. That, that's okay, it still looks okay. And then I'm gonna use this one. Here's this bolt. Okay, in this bolt, I'm just gonna ink partial oval like that and move over to this side and do the same partial oval on this side like this okay and then now i'm going to use my my valuable six cents more valuable ruler with with the pennies and ink this line here and go on this side and then ink this one and which one is this pointing at just pointing at the center just so make sure this side's pointing at the, the center too like that and then here and then right here that's that's the completed drawing. That's wow. That only took me. That was quick. Okay, right over here. So again, uh, for those of you who are watching this ch uh, channel, check out Snart's video at Snart S N A R T. She's one of my students who does really amazing art. She does digital art, uh, traditional art, and she, as well as um, uh, videos and stuff. Uh, I want her to make more videos. Uh, look at her work. Uh, thank you for joining me here. I'm, I'm going to add some more frown lines just just because it looks looks cool. Okay, and then maybe another one right there, like a big forehead. Okay, and let me see what else can I do. I, I think that looks okay. Let me add some more. So I'm just being picky right now. And then after this stage is done, I'm going to sign my name and then I'm going to erase it. And <laughs> there's a method in erasing. I got to show you guys how to erase. And there's so much people out there that would um, erase it and kind of like crinkle up their paper. I'm just going to sign my name with, uh, actually, I'm just going to sign my name with the this this uh, pen over here. So like, I like to sign my name like closer to the artwork over here. Okay, and that's, that's my signature. Now I'm going to take the eraser. Uh, the eraser I use is this this plastic eraser. I find these plastic erasers better than uh, some of those red erasers. Let me see what some of the questions so I can answer it. See, let's create wrote, you make inking look so easy. It's harder than it seems. It takes lots of control and patience. Yeah, it, the, the more you practice, the better you get. It's like, you just get used to it. Uh, just kind of like driving. The longer you drive, the easier it is to drive or to parallel park. You just get used to it. Well, You've done so well. You haven't needed to use whiteout yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Hey, Music House. How's it going? It's good to see you here. Music House is an established artist. Uh, he also was on my Patreon page for, for a while. And I see some of those really, really amazing artists. Um, you should check out his channel as well. Um, he's a really, really amazing artist. Music House agreed. No whiteout so fast. Yeah, I haven't. I wasn't really thinking about using whiteout over here. Uh is snart on youtube uh snart yes snart is on youtube in fact in one of his first video uh he's drawing something i think he's drawing like a like a funny looking batman the critter <laughs> and then in his video he goes uh like he typed down there teacher teacher uh, are you happy that i posted a video <laughs> that, that was so funny yeah so snart is on youtube as well but it, i don't he has she hasn't actually posted much of um Herself, but f I want you guys to check out Snart's uh, Instagram page um, at Snart S N A R T. And let me make sure all of this is dry first. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is if you're erasing something and it's still wet, uh, and it's gonna smudge your artwork. Okay, everything is dry. I, what I do is I just press down and make sure there's no ink. Okay, I'm just gonna erase this. You see, I'm erasing. I'm erasing in between my finger. What's your channel's name? Snart, are you there? You see, uh, Snart, let's see. Snart, if you're there, Snart, uh, please post your YouTube uh, channel name. I think your YouTube channel is also Snart. Hey, Snart, yeah, Snart, what is your YouTube channel name? Type it, type it in right now. And also type in your uh, Instagram channel name. Uh, type it into the comments so people can follow. So when this video goes live, everyone's also going to see uh, uh, your your name and your your handle over there. All right, type it in. Don't be afraid to type it in. Yeah, she's yeah. One of these days, I'm going to have her make a video of her drawing something digitally with her fingers. How she's drawing, sketching, and coloring with her fingers. It, it really looks like she's fing finger painting. 
see, did you post this, Snart? Okay, Snart, type in your Instagram handle and type in your YouTube channel. Okay, I'm going to start uh, erasing some of this. And then after I erase it, I'm going to see if there's any area that turns gray and I'm going to darken it up. Okay, let me see. Actually, Snart's YouTube channel, if you just click on to his, her, to her avatar right now, you just go there. But her, her Instagram is, uh, I think it's like Snarty Artie or something like that. Or it's, it's at S-N-A-R-T. Okay. She's very, very talented. Her, her, the way she colors is very good. I have to, uh, she's, she's one of my students that I teach on the weekends. Um, and I want to, her to be become a professional artist if she, if she wants to. At least she has that um, channel to go to. But I'm, I'm making her draw and paint out of her comfort zone. Okay, because she likes drawing Miku, Miku, this uh, this Vocaloid all the time. She always likes drawing lemons with eyes and legs and hands. Actually, not even not even hands, just legs. Okay, so here is the drawing of Frankenstein. I'm no longer under contract in August. I'm gonna post like crazy soon. What what kind of contract you are on? I, I'm, that's pretty cool. I want to know more. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait, she draws on the phone with her finger. That's hard. She doesn't draw on the phone with her finger. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. She she has a big iPad. Okay, people with iPad they have an Apple pencil in their drawing here. She is actually using her finger. And doing all the transforming, adjusting, uh, resizing with fingers. It's, it's really, I've never seen anyone uh, do art like that. She's painting, she's sketching with her finger, she's turning. It's, it's, and not only that, she's like really quick. The, you can't even see her fingers move. It's, it's like, it's, it's weird. The art turns out amazing too. I, I try to make her uh, use a, uh, a stylus pen or an apple, but you know, she's just used to using it because she's, she thought that's how art is supposed to be created with, with your fingers. Okay, so there is here is Frankenstein with the helmet right over here. Actually, I want to make uh, the lip here a little bit darker. Uh, the the top the top um, lip over here should always be a little bit darker. So if you make it darker, it's gonna create a shadow there. I'm gonna get some ink here, dip it in, and I'm gonna darken up the nose. Dark up the nose here, and I'm gonna make this lip a little bit darker here. Okay, make sure the lines are smooth. Darker here, and darker here. And then I'm also gonna make the bottom of this, uh, hmm, should I make it glossy, almost like metallic or not? Yeah, might as well. Okay, so I'm gonna make this. Okay, there we go. Just some, some glossy effect here and then on this side okay and this is just random random gloss effect over here gonna make sure this is sharp and I'm not gonna do much tapering here usually when I do comic book work I'll do a lot of like uh, hatch lines and taper lines but for this one I'm not gonna do that much okay that's that's good enough don't want to go too crazy with it Normally, I would go really detail. Uh, no, I don't like that one. I'm going to try it again. I actually need to get in over here. There we go. That looks okay. Okay. There. Let's see. Oh, let's, let's see. Let me see if there's any questions or comments that I can reply. See, I've been doing album cover art for merch for in the independent record label. Yeah, One Mighty Art, post some of your videos of some of your work. I would like to see it. Uh, I know you're you're one of the artists um, that follows me, and then I kind of want to get to know people that follows me and, and get to know them well and see what they do. I couldn't imagine using my uh, I couldn't imagine using my fingers to draw digitally. Remember, I used to ink people. Used I used a mouse to draw digitally. Yeah. So when I first started using Photoshop, I used to use a mouse before I started using a drawing tablet. Uh, a little bit harder. Can you imagine using a finger? Uh, let's see. One more. I gotta make the money. Everything costs more now. Everything does cost more. Even comic books. A little floppy comic book is like three ninety nine now. It does cost more. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy a trade paperback. Oh, I just sub you. By the way, one body art. I always see you on comic art channels. I didn't know you were active on YouTube. I can use my finger to pick my nose. <laughs> 
I can use my finger to pick uh, Frankenstein's nose right over here. Okay, I can only use my finger to pick my nose. <laughs> I post on YouTube, monetize, and, and Instagram. It's great. So that's my drawing. I'm going to zoom in closer so you can see uh, the Spaceman. Beautiful work. Well, also, are you finished with your eight-page milestone initiative? Not yet. Here is, here is, well, I'm just going to give you guys a little sneak peek. Here is the DC Comic Milestone Initiative. Okay. And then I'm going to show you a little bit of something that I, I lettered this. And then I started inking some of the buildings. Uh, since this is just background, so I'll, I'll show you guys a little bit here. But it's not quite done yet. Eight pages. Okay. Good. So here is uh, Frankie in the space helmet. Uh, I'm going to go over and show you guys one more time. Uh, this is for my good friend uh, Marlo uh, in Canada. Uh, dedicated to her late husband, Kellum, right over here. So thank you for watching the live stream. Uh, please hit the subscribe uh, button if you um, if you like this kind of video and you want to see more. Uh, hit like, uh, share, and subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And follow me on the next live stream. I know I don't really post uh, when I'm going live stream. I just go live stream when I feel like doing something. So thank you all for joining me here. Uh, until next time, keep on uh, drawing. Uh, thank you for watching, and keep on doing artwork, everyone. Take care and have a good night. Bye. Bye, everyone.